So this is my Xbox Series S, and I used this as my only gaming device for the last seven days. Didn't touch my high-end gaming PC or my PS5. So let's talk about my thoughts. <laughs> So if you haven't seen the last video yet, I recommend going and checking that out. I'll have it in the pinned comment down below. That was my experience of going into Walmart, buying this thing, not even knowing that they had one in stock and walking out the store with a next generation console. So without further ado, I just want to talk about what I like and what I don't like with this console. We're going to start out with the things that I do like. So number one is pricing. I paid $323.67 in Texas. So that includes the tax here in Texas. I know taxes is different state to state, but $323.67 for a next generation console that I just walked into the store and bought. So pricing and availability, insane thumbs up for me there because you can't find a PlayStation 5 digital, which is the closest in terms of the price bracket to the Xbox Series S in stock anywhere. I was lucky enough to find one about a year ago, but you still can't find the PlayStation 5 or the PlayStation 5 digital anywhere. It is very hard to find and this local Walmart that I go to frequently has the Xbox Series S in stock and on occasion also has the Xbox Series X in stock. So in terms of raw availability, you know, the ability to walk into a store and just buy a console, Xbox has PlayStation beat. But this is not an Xbox versus PlayStation comparison video. But the fact that I was able to walk into a store and buy a console for under $400 that opens the door to next generation gaming and it was just there and it's under $400, that's really impressive to me. And what else is impressive, and this is another huge thumbs up for me, is Game Pass. Game Pass is an incredible deal. And there's honestly no other way I can really put that. I am able to play hundreds of games that I've previously purchased basically for free if I have the subscription, right? So with Xbox Game Pass, I can go play Star Wars Battlefront 2, Star Wars Battlefront. I can play Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I can play all of the Battlefield games, pretty much. I can play Unraveled, which is a really cool EA published uh, indie game. You also have access to games like Star Wars Squadrons. You have Sea of Thieves. You have Halo 5, which this I actually played Halo 5 for the first time on this Xbox Series S. It was one of the first games I downloaded and played because you can't play that on PC. And I had an Xbox 360, but I never had an Xbox One. So I just never played Halo 5. And a little bit of a tangent here. What? <laughs> That's all I have to say about Halo 5. It's just, what? <laughs> but nonetheless, having access to all of these games for the starting price of Game Pass is an incredible value. For under $400, you can have a console and hundreds of games. It's an incredible value. So pricing, availability, and the value of Game Pass are three huge thumbs up for me. Another huge thumbs up for me on the Xbox Series S is just the physical footprint of it. It is a small console. So if you are in a smaller space, like a dorm room, or if you are a trucker and you're driving a truck all around the country delivering food for all of us at home, which by the way, if you are a trucker, I appreciate you. That's hard work you guys don't get enough credit for. But if you are a trucker, you can put this in the back of your truck if you have one of those trucks that has the cabin that you can sleep in. You know, if you have a TV back there, the Xbox Series S is a great way to play games while in between drives. It's an insane value that cannot be beat. You cannot build a gaming PC for sub $400 that gives you the ability to play games at 4K 30 FPS, sometimes even 4K, 60 FPS, depending on the title. You cannot build a computer for that cost, and you cannot find PlayStation 5s around that cost. So the Xbox Series S just stands alone at a price bracket that is very, very competitive. So if you're somebody looking at buying a console for a cousin who's young and just wants to get into gaming, and you're not sure if they're going to stick with it, or a younger brother, maybe your grandparents want to play games now that they've retired, but they're not sure about it, right? Who knows what your situation is? Maybe you're a broke college student and you just want a next-gen console. The Xbox Series S is an incredible value, an incredibly small footprint, and honestly, not that expensive. So I really do, from a price to value standpoint, recommend the Xbox Series S. Now, it is an all-digital console, and there is, unfortunately, a problem with the fact that it is all-digital. You have on the box 512 gigs of usable storage, but in reality, that number is actually almost exactly 364. So with modern day games being as large as they are, like, for example, Halo 5 Guardians, I will put the install size of that game up on screen right now, you have 364 gigs of usable storage to work with on an all digital console. 
if you can't tell, this is not a positive. This is one of my negatives. And it is, in my opinion, the biggest negative with the Xbox Series S. I only have four games installed on this thing. And I'm using 77% of the usable storage. Four games. Halo Infinite Campaign. Not even the multiplayer. Just the campaign. Gears 5, Forza 5, and Halo 5. That is it. I also wanted to install the Master Chief Collection because I'm playing on an Xbox. I want to play Halo. Xbox is where Halo started, right? Makes sense. I want to play Halo on the Xbox. Didn't have enough room for it. So storage, I do not know why on an all digital console, you cannot get an Xbox Series S with a disk drive on an all digital console in 2021 when this thing really first started hitting customers' hands and now into 2022 with the install sizes we have today, for massive games like the Call of Duty games that have been coming out recently are huge. I only have four games installed on this next-gen console. So 512 gigs of storage, nope, you get 364 of actual usable. I am just disappointed. And sure, you can go out and buy one of Microsoft's proprietary Seagate expansion cards, but once you buy an expansion card and the console, you might as well buy a Series X because the cost of an expansion card with the console is about as much as a Series X. And with the Series X, you have not only a more powerful console, but also one terabyte, which I'm sure it's like 950 something of usable space, but still you have one terabyte and more power for almost the same price of the Series S plus an expansion card. So the storage is a big thumbs down for me. However, the internal storage might not actually be a problem for you if you're interested in the Xbox Series S. If you're a very casual gamer and you only play a handful of games at a time, which there are a lot of people out there like this, you might be fine with only 364 gigs of internal storage. For example, my brother, he plays about three games. He plays Fortnite, Call of Duty, Warzone, and maybe he'll play 2K. Well, with the upcoming Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard, if that actually happens, Call of Duty might come to Game Pass, 2K is already on Game Pass, and Warzone and Fortnite are free. So if you're a casual gamer who has an Xbox One or a base PlayStation 4 from 2013, and you just want to upgrade, the Xbox Series S is not only the cheapest way, but if you get Game Pass as well, it is the best way to get in and play those next generation titles like NBA 2K22, like Call of Duty Warzone, which I guess that's not technically next gen, but it will run better on the Xbox Series S than it does on the base PlayStation 4 and base Xbox One. Also, Xbox Game Streaming is included in the higher tier of Xbox Game Pass. So instead of getting the standard edition of Xbox Game Pass, if you get Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, you can cloud stream games. So let's say that you're interested in trying out Forza Horizon 4, but you do not have the storage space to install it on your console. But you want to give the game a shot, and you might want to uninstall something to install Forza Horizon 4. Well, you want to try it before you spend two hours downloading a new game. Well, with cloud streaming, you're able to just play the game and try it out or just play the whole game over the cloud. Now, cloud streaming, everybody knows it's not perfect yet. That's probably the direction gaming is heading towards, but it's not quite there yet. But you do have the ability to just try out a game and see if it's something that you're interested in dedicating the hard drive space to. So that is something that I actually did today. My friend Kyle came over today and he wanted to show me how Forza Horizon 4 has Lego edition cars in it. Because we were playing Forza 5, and I was talking about how it would be cool if they had Lego cars, because I know Lego makes cars. And I would be like, you know, it would be cool if those like Lego GTRs or those Lego Ferraris were in Forza. He's like, oh, let me show you something. Oh, crap. You don't have Forza installed. Oh, crap. It'll take two hours to install. Oh, crap. You don't have the space for it. Wait, I can just stream it, because he has Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. And that's exactly what he did. So... The game streaming might not be something you use all the time, but if you want to just try out a game and see if it's worth your time and worth your hard drive space, you can do that with the cloud streaming. However, that is only a feature as far as I am aware on Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which fortunately him and I both have. Now I just want to talk about my experience gaming on this device. So controller is where I'm going to start out, and this thing is one of the most comfortable controllers ever. I already had a uh, Xbox Series controller. I had the black one which I use with my computer all of the time. This feels exactly like it. The controller is insane. The vibrations, sometimes there's vibrations almost specific to each trigger, and it's insane. It is so comfortable to hold. It's white, but I haven't gotten any stains on it. You know, it's only been a week, but still. And uh, all the buttons feel amazing. 
this honestly, I mean, Xbox has perfected their controller game. To put this into perspective, I still have my Xbox 360 hooked up. It still works. This is an Xbox 360 controller. And this is the Xbox Series controller, right? It is, I mean, we've gone from this dinky little plastic thing, and this is dirty, actually, I need to clean this, to this. It looks, I mean, this looks like a toy. This does not, right? It looks insane. It feels so comfortable to hold. I mean, Xbox has perfected their controller game. Um, D-pad is the one thing that I don't like. I wish it was just like a traditional D-pad. I wish it didn't have this, like, uh, all this excess. I wish it was just only the up, down, left, right, but still super comfortable to use. The controller fits amazing in my hands. I mean, it's just a great controller. And if you saw my previous video, it comes with batteries, batteries which have not died. And I've beat Halo 5, I have played through Halo Infinite, and I've played a lot of Forza, and I've, I've dabbled in Gears 5, but I've been playing this thing a lot the past week. And I know there's an ongoing meme of like, oh, my Xbox controller dies, I gotta find my battery, you can, you, USB-C port, I don't know what year you guys are living on, memeing on Xbox for not being able to just plug your controller in. There's a USB-C port on here, so I'm, that's an old meme, right? But still. You can just plug your Xbox controller into a USB-C and charge it and still use it, which I haven't done, but it's possible. And if you do that, you don't even need to put batteries in the thing, right? So that is a very eco-friendly and cost-effective way to use your Xbox Series controller. Just have a wall outlet with a USB-C nearby, keep it charging, and play like that. So now I just want to talk about my gaming experience. As I said before, controller feels amazing, but let's talk about games. So... Forza Horizon 5 is a game that my buddy Kyle played a lot when he came over, and I've also put a decent amount of time into on my Xbox Series S. Now, I also own this game and play this game on PC with Game Pass Ultimate. So Game Pass Ultimate is the reason I own Forza Horizon 5. It's not the kind of game I would buy, but because of Game Pass, I've been playing it. And so I've played it on PC and I've played it on my Xbox Series S. Now, my PC has a 3090 in it. It has a Ryzen 9 3900X, 32 gigs of RAM, 18 terabytes of storage. It's a big monster computer. I've spent a lot of time and a lot of money building my dream PC. So playing on a $300 console compared to a $4,000 computer, big price difference. I will say with confidence that the actual scale of price to performance between $4,000 computer and Xbox Series S, it's kind of close, right? And that makes me a little uncomfortable as somebody spent a lot of money on this computer, but it is arguably kind of close. Now, you are not going to get 144 frames at Ray Tracing Ultra in Cyberpunk 2077, for example, like I can on my PC on an Xbox Series S. However, if this is just your console and this is the only gaming device you have and you're a casual gamer or a semi-hardcore gamer who likes to play a lot of Call of Duty or whatever or competitive games, the Xbox Series S feels great to play. However, the game that I spent the most time with, other than Forza Horizon 5, was Halo 5 Guardians. And I know, Halo 5, bad game. I played it just because I've never played it before. The Series S was the first opportunity I've ever really had to give that game a try. And while it is by no stretch of the imagination the best Halo game ever, it looks and runs beautifully. I am disappointed by the lack of an FOV slider. I know modern Halo games like Halo Infinite, for example, which is the only Halo game since 5, but you get my point. Halo Infinite has an FOV slider. And I played some Halo Infinite and I increased the FOV up to 100. So the lack of an FOV slider made my vision in the game go from like this to this. So it was very annoying, but I still played through it and it looked and ran beautifully. And as I said, it might not be the best Halo, but it is a pretty game and it runs fantastic. And it got to the point where I wasn't even thinking on the fact that I was playing on an Xbox Series S as opposed to my gaming PC or even an Xbox Series X. I was just enjoying the game. There was no noticeable frame dips. There was no lack in visual quality. The game just looked and ran amazing. And for once again, $330, that is an insane thing to say. I didn't notice any hitches at all. So I played through the entirety of Halo 5. I played through about halfway of Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite, wow, doesn't look as good as it does on my PC because that game's also on PC. I have something to compare it to. Doesn't look as good. It runs really well. 60 plus FPS pretty consistently. So if you're looking at getting into playing Halo, the Xbox Series S is just the cheapest way to do it with the addition of a subscription to Game Pass. And not just Halo. If you're just looking at getting back into gaming, maybe you haven't had a console in a long time. Maybe you're a parent buying a gift for a kid. Get this over the Switch. While the Switch is considered to be more family friendly, the Xbox does still have 
E for Everyone and E10 Plus and Team Games. So if you don't want your kid to play M games, there are still plenty of non M games on Xbox. So I would get them the Xbox Series S over the Switch because not only is the Switch dying hardware, but the Xbox Series S has a big library of hundreds of games for them to choose from if you get them Game Pass. And as they grow up into a, a young adult, they might want to play more mature games. And if you get them the Series S, they'll have the ability to play Grand Theft Auto. They'll have the ability to play Call of Duty. Well, you can't really do that on the Switch. So if you're looking at getting a gift for somebody, if you're looking at getting back into gaming, if you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of time to game, but you still want to have the opportunity to, if you're a college student who doesn't have a lot of money to throw around, if you're a trucker looking for some way to game in the back of your truck, these are people that I think the Xbox Series S are perfect for. It is an amazing entry point into next generation gaming. And for under $400, you can get hundreds of games and a console that can output at 4K60. You just cannot build a computer that can compete. And while the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition is only about 100 bucks, not regarding tax more than this, PlayStation does not have a Game Pass competitor. So even if you get a PS5 Digital Edition, not only will you spend more on new games on average as Sony is pushing $80 for new games rather than 60, there's no Game Pass competitor. So I think that the Xbox Series S is the perfect way to get into next-gen gaming. If you're on an old Xbox One and you want to stay in the Xbox ecosystem, I would consider this if you only play a handful of games. However, if you have an Xbox One and you're a big hardcore gamer that likes to play several games at a time, it's not worth getting an Xbox Series S and then a storage expansion card. You should just get a Series X. And while they are harder to find, it is more powerful and you will just have more storage. So those are my first thoughts after spending a week with the Xbox Series S. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know if you own one. Let me know if you're considering picking one up. Why or why not? I really like this console. And uh, I've enjoyed my time with it. So thank you so much for watching my review and my thoughts one week later on the Xbox Series S. My name's Release Radar, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.